Hello, in this video, what we are going to do is to create the login route. In the previous lesson, we created this register route to register a user and we handle an error or any exception that might occur, right? But before we continue, I will point out that we can continue to refactor this application to eight controllers and other styles. But I just want to keep this uh, application very really simple. So I'm going to have all the users route, all the logic inside the route itself. All right. So if you're able to understand what is going on in the logic and you're trying to refactor it to using, for example, controllers and other stuff, it's very really easy for you to do. So let's get started. So it is what we have at present. All what this route is doing is to just send back login route to the user. So let's try. When you go to Postman, okay, where is my Postman? Yes, here. And there is a route we hit. When you hit on the login route, you see it gave us back only login. So what we are going to do right now is to take the email and the password from the request body and then check if that user have its data inside our database then we can grant that user a privilege or right to log in into our application. So let's get started. So first, what we need is to handle any error, any async error using the package we installed called async handler. So what I'm going to do is that always we wrap that package, that function with our request handler. Okay, so from here, we can cut or copy to clipboard like that. And then let's bring in the async handler like that. And then we just bring in our request and response handler like so. But I want to make use of async await. So I will mark this function as async. Perfect. So. What do I need? First, I will need the credentials from the request body. So let me say, um, so I just will give a comment here, but it's okay. So let's just um, destructure the login credentials from the request body as that. So it comes, I mean, need email and the, and the password. From where? From the request body like that good i have prithia so as soon as i format i save it it formatted in this way so it's exactly the same as this all right so the next thing is that i have to check if the user who's trying to log in have your data inside our database that's how we are going to make use of um Mongo's function called find one. So what I'm going to find, we are going to find the user by email. So I will say const user is equal to await because I'm making of promises here. I'm making requests to the mongoose and I will say user dot find one. Okay. And this find one is I'm going to check for email that is coming back from the request body. And since this key and the value are the same, I can make use of just email as that. So right now, I can console log the user if the user exists. All right, but if not, so let's try to just send. Okay, let me just make you if statement. So I will say that if there is a user, okay, and I just want to send back something for you to see, I will send back the user like that. Else, I will just say res dot send user not found. Okay, so with this implementation, we can go back to our postman and test this route and see if this function is really working. So let's get started. So here, what it need is just email and then the password. So I will pass in email here and I will say, ab at gmail.com 
and then let me pass in the password like that and i would say the password just one two three four five so let me send what do i see user not found because this email does not exist inside our database so we can go and then register this user okay we can go ahead and register this user and check so now let me try to register this user so i'm going to hit this um, endpoint to register and i have it this way we created the previous video this route okay slash register so instead of name let me this one ab because the email is what's ab what i copy sorry is ab at what gmail.com and the password is okay one two three four five one two three four five let me hit and then as you can see it has been registered now i have this user and have its password being hashed okay so let me go back to login and login with the, the with the new credentials to a minute only email when i hit let's see exactly we found the user okay so this tells us that our logic is working now so quickly let's go back and then continue first we will say that if there is which word yeah if there is a user okay then i'll come back let me delete this one and let me say set status code okay this is optional but i would like to set my status code to be sure that everything is working so i would say rest dot status mean i'm setting my status code to 200 which means everything is okay now when it's okay i want to send back something to the user okay i want to use it and then with json so i just want to send back this id you can quickly you can even send all the user but i prefer to send by the pieces of details i want sometimes i don't need all the details to be sent back to the user for example um the id whatever for example some um fails that might be um vital to you you don't need to send back to the user so normally this is what i do so you can quickly even send back all the user like that it is the same thing but this is how i prefer to do it okay so id and i'll say user dot id okay we can make use of just id because remember mongoose gave us this id two ids when you create a user let's check if it is true now as you see we have dash id underscore id okay so that is this is what i'm going to make use of underscore id all right and we have access to the id itself so here um because here i'm sending where is it um register the user i have it here and created okay so i only need to send um back or call it the id and then name of the user which user the name i prefer make underscore id sorry i forgot to do that and then i want to send back the password okay user dot password was an object i have access to that and then the email so these are the pieces of the details i want to send back to the user when any when a person logs in Okay, even the password is very really important for now. I just want to send it, all this data back to the user. Okay, so let's try and then with this implementation, we can go back here and then log in again and see everything is working perfectly as we discussed earlier on. Okay, so if something goes wrong, I just want to send back a nice error. I'll throw an error. Okay, so I'll just I'll just set back set my status code to 401 okay it's not found okay and i'll throw on my custom error and we, we created our custom error in the previous video so i'll say error instead of say for example password incorrect or email incorrect i don't want to expose um some details for example, if someone to log in on your behalf, so all I can say is that invalid credentials, okay, invalid credentials, like that. So with this implementation, let's go back to Postman and see. So let's log in. 
let me change the email to whatever maybe a and b2 and then log in as you can see invalid credentials right so guys this is how you create a login route we haven't finished yet now we have what login successfully so how are we going to authenticate the user okay give permission to the user to log in to any route that is protected for example some route might not be what um accessible to any user except the login user now on on our side we know that we have what login successfully but how, how can our server identify this particular user that has been logging yes so because of that we have to create a token and assign a token to the login user so that our server will be able to identify this user okay because the token can be expired a certain period based on your configuration so we're going to make use of a token um a, a token package um for example json web token to do that so the the main purpose of json web token is to what assign a token to a user who has logged in so that our server will be able to identify the user based on a token it has because our server will have a copy of the token because the id used to what encrypt or what used to what generate the token so that our server will be able to know this particular user so this is what we'll be going to do in the next video